Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Jacob Zuma delivered the State of the Nation address in Cape Town on Thursday night. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the highlights. Hi Terence. Hi. What were some of the major themes that emerged for the economy and business? Well, I think uh, it was a major part of the address. I think the, the headline was that we're living in a better place now, 20 years after democracy. Than we, than we were during apartheid. But it also dealt into, delved into the economic theme quite a lot because I think there's a realization without the economy growing and getting to the levels of the sort of 5% plus um, that we outline in the National Development Plan, it's going to be very difficult to address the triple challenge of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. So it was a big part of the address. And then there was a, a specific theme. Um, President Zuma stopped, looked up, and spoke to Parliament about the, the mining industry and the industrial action that's underway in that industry and made a sort of a strong appeal to both the industry, but, it's, but, it, but especially to the unions, to be uh, cautious about the economic impact and the potential jobs impact of strike action at a time when the industry uh, you know, is vulnerable, is not really producing at the level it should, where profits are down, and that, you know, that, that jobs are, you know, that he appealed to union leaders to, to, yes, look for better conditions, look for better wages, but to balance that with the need to sustain jobs in the industry. And I think that was a, a key highlight of the speech for the economy, for business, because I think it's not just the mining industry that we've been seeing these industrial actions. It's, it's across a broad base uh, in the South African economy. And that is a key supply side risk for South Africa to uh, in 2014. You know, are we going to be able to produce uh, the minerals or, or the manufactured products that we need to try and get ourselves onto a newer, a higher growth momentum? Because the outlook is not very strong. And then the other themes for business that I think that uh, we're looking closely is the infrastructure program still intact. I think we did hear that 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 was confirmed, plus we were given some insight into what the future of the infrastructure program could be, especially in uh, the energy sector. So President Zuma made a point of emphasizing shale energy and the potential game-changing role in the South African economy, that, which is obviously controversial. He also equally controversially said we're going to be moving ahead with the, uh, the nuclear program and the procurement process around that. And that, again, is a contested terrain and then <coughs> made a point around bio, biofuels and uh, bioenergy that that was also moving ahead. So again, underlying the transport, underlying the, the water, underlying the energy infrastructure themes, as well as the, the social infrastructure, that was a major theme and point, again, re-emphasized uh, by the President and the State of the Nation. And what is the outlook for South African economy and business as we head to the polls on May 7? Yeah, I think that the first half of the year, uh, it, was, it was again pointed out in the speech last night uh, that we're in a difficult period still. You know, uh, South Africa hasn't recovered well from the global financial cri economic crisis. Um, we had a period of, of, of stronger growth, but we seem to have fallen back into a very low growth uh, path um, over the last year. And the outlook for 2014, again, is not spectacular. So I think the, the theme was, again, that business labor and government need to come together as, as they did uh, when the Great Recession hit uh, the first time to try and stem the losses of jobs and to try and recover. But again, to put shoulder to the wheel because really the, the economic outlook for, s for South Africa is really not strong. Uh, we, we, and we say this against the context of already high unemployment levels, high poverty levels, high inequality. And without that growth, uh, there's all those other things are not going to come into place. So we're looking at really a 2% type, 2.5% two, uh, growth level this year, which on the back of last year is around the same. You know, it's not strong. It's very weak when you compare it to our, our neighborhood. Our neighborhood's growing at the 5.5% plus type level. And it's also weak in the context of, you know, a more favorable exchange rate because uh, we have an exchange rate now that no one could say is overvalued. In fact, it's, it's probably undervalued. And it should be an advantage to getting ourselves uh, um, 
back into the export markets, it's particularly because there is a recovery. We've got the neighborhood that's strong, plus there's Europe that is started, starting to come out of recession, America starting to grow. Okay, China looks weaker than it did. But we have the, the demand tailwind, and we now also have the currency tailwind. But the economic outlook is made uh, not favorable because of those supply side risks that uh, President Zuma alluded to. And one key supply side risk is the labor unrest. So if you're not producing the platinum or the cars that you export, you're not going to close that current account deficit. You're not going to get the economy growing at the levels that we, we could. And uh, the other supply side risks are relate to infrastructure. And that's really, if we were to want to grow both mining and manufacturing up, but do we have the electricity to do that? That's very unclear. And when it comes down to logistics, is our logistics capacity in a good position to, uh, to handle not only the cargo flows, but also handle that at a competitive rate. I mean, you're hearing more and more that it's really very difficult for manufacturers to compete because of the inland leg from uh, Gauteng to Durban being as expensive as, as the full export, say, from a China. Uh, and so we have to deal with those supply side risks and uh, vulnerabilities. And without dealing with those and dealing with them decisively, we're going to stay on this low growth path for some time. And how do you think government is going to handle the surge in service delivery protests um, that are taking place across the country? Yes, I think this was a, it was, it was a key theme of the State of the Nation again. <coughs> but it was a weak analysis, I think. Jacob Zuma provided an analysis which basically said the service delivery protests are a victim of infrastructure rollout success. So saying that because 95% of people have suddenly got good services, it's the five percent that have been left out that are now, you know, raising their hands and saying, "What about us?" And I don't think that is a—it's it's a part of the truth, but I don't think it is the whole truth. I think if you deal with uh, uh, people that are involved in the municipal infrastructure space in particular, they say there's a serious maintenance problem, there's a serious skills problem at the local government level, and that is leading to a lot of these problems. Um, and people, are, services are not, uh, uh, you know, in the condition that. That is uh, that they should be, in order for pe people to be satisfied. So you have major water cuts, you have major power cuts. Yes, there are instances where actually uh, municipalities are getting their ducks in a row on the billing side, and that is giving peop uh, communities a shock where they, for the first time, getting serious uh, accounts for their services, and that that is an element of that. But on the whole, uh, there's definitely a weakness at the local government level, where the, the rubber hits the road for communities around those services, electricity, power, sanitation, electricity, water, and sanitation, that they really are not being delivered to the standard that people uh, you know, had been maybe accustomed to for short periods because of a maintenance backlog that's really not being addressed. Now, the civil engineering uh, of South Africa has we proposed that maybe there should be a, a set-aside fund for municipal, municipal maintenance. Now, that's difficult in the context of our budget balance at the moment. Major budget constraints can we find fresh resources to boost municipal uh, infrastructure maintenance. But it's worth having a discussion about because there's, there's no doubt unless we get a, a, a grasp this nettle of maintenance and skills at the municipal level, this is going to be a perennial problem and it's going to be a uh, it's going to serve not only as a point of violence in the country, but it's also going to lower the, um, the investor appetite because it's seen as a, a destabilizing point. So I think uh, it wasn't well dealt with in the state of the nation. It needs to be grasped, and I'm hopefully maybe in the budget in the coming weeks we'll see some emphasis on the maintenance of municipal infrastructure and the expansion thereof, but I think maintenance is a key issue. Thanks. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.